Hello everyone, um, and thank you Laura for inviting me to your conference. Um, my name is Sinead O'Brien and I'm the founder of Mungo Murphy Seaweed Company and I'm here um, inside the abalone farm, so I, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, so as, yeah, as the theme of the conference is about sustainability, um, I'd like to talk about uh, sustainability in aquaculture and uh, tell you a bit about what we do here on the farm. So. Um, just for a bit of background, the farm was built in 2007 by my mother Cindy O'Brien and she uh, set up this land-based system, um, I suppose in those days because it was sort of more convenient to be able to access your product from a land-based system rather than having to go out on a boat, she wasn't too confident uh, going out on a boat in the west of Ireland, especially with the kind of storms that we get um, in the winter time. So in order to find a species that would be suitable for a land-based system, it kind of was a yeah, narrowing down process. She knew that she didn't want to work with fish because there's just a little bit more risk involved in uh, farming fish. Um, so she kind of narrowed it down to the shellfish element. And then from there, uh, she chose the abalone because they're marine gastropod mollusks, which means that they they just graze on seaweed. So there is a bit of effort, I suppose, in having to feed them, like putting seaweed in the tanks. But there's a lower risk in terms of disease because they're not filtering the seawater. So if there is, you know, bacteria in the seawater, it's not like that's getting into their system as it would for mussels or oysters, which um, are filter feeders. So that was one element then the other was um value so she needed a type of seafood that was valuable enough to kind of sustain the cost of running a, a land-based system and that's when the abalone came in because abalone are a high they're pre, you know a premium shellfish um so that was sort of the the thinking that went into it nowadays um things have yeah the environment and the sea has changed quite a lot uh, it's it's very unfortunate now to hear that the seawater is becoming more acidic and warmer. So what happens for shellfish is the shell development gets hampered because the, the acidity in the water is corroding the shell or in, it's hampering the, the development of the shell, which then allows for other um, creatures to get into their actual meat and that it they're, leaves them more prone to infection. Similarly with the, the rising seawater temperatures, with that comes more bacteria and with that come with more bacteria comes more disease. So having a land-based system in today's world just offers a lot more protection and control over the water parameters that the animals are growing in. So um, from it being like a, a matter of convenience, it's now becoming more uh, a design for growing seafood without the, the risks that are involved in actually having it out in the sea, which is kind of a very depressing idea. Um, the species that we grow in our farm is the Haliotis discus hanai, so that's a Japanese species of abalone. And it was introduced into Ireland in the 1970s, um, I guess in, inspired by, I'm told it was inspired by a Japanese marine biologist who visited the west of Ireland and said that the environment is very similar to where the abalone naturally grow in Japan, in Hokkaido. So from, from that time, um, researchers figured out the life cycle and how they could grow in Ireland and Cindy um, set up this farm focusing fo purely on the, the Japanese species of abalone. Since then, um, she's also been looking at the sea cucumber, so the, the native sea cucumber, the European sea cucumber that grows here, that, called Holotheria forscali. And there is an interesting project that we're embarking on this summer, which is to include the sea cucumber in the bottom of our tanks uh, where we have the, the abalone because sea cucumber grown uh, in the same environment as abalone is actually very mutually beneficial because 
um, the sea cucumber emits calcium carbonate, which is really good for the abalone shell development. And abalone um, are very messy eaters and also uh, process the seaweed that they eat in such a way that it makes the nutrition from the seaweed more bioavailable to the sea cucumber. So to have the abalone in, a bo in our tanks eating the seaweed, it passing through their system and then their poo getting into the water for the, the sea cucumber to eat is actually very beneficial for the sea cucumber and then beneficial for the humans who eat the sea cucumber in the end. So that's kind of the, the thought process that's going on here. Another project that um, we're hoping to start this summer is to use the outflow from the abalone as well, from the, the tanks with the abalone and sea cucumber to feed into uh, tanks with sea lettuce. So we've tried this before um, over, the, over the summers, but this year we're hoping to partner with NUI Galway um, because they've identified a number of strains that some are better suited to the summer temperature, others are better, better suited to the winter temperature. And so it's just finding out which ones that are, are suitable for our system because when we tried it before they were you know we had good growth up into a point until then it got too warm and the sea lettuce started disintegrating and getting bleached by the sun because there's too much sunlight so it's all that's all a matter of trial and error and I think it's something that is really good for for aquaculture because I just think the idea of monoculture in any whether it's land or sea farming is just very old-fashioned and not not a good idea. I think it, it really makes sense to use all of the resource that you can, you know, make the most of, of what you have growing so that nothing is going to waste because the waste of the abalone is food for the sea lettuce and the sea lettuce can then be food for humans as well um, or back to being food for the abalone. So it's kind of a more cyclical um, ecosystem that we're trying to create here. Um, with the abalone themselves, uh, we've always fed just a, a pure seaweed diet. So from the day they're born, they're fed uh, a diatom, so a microalgae. Until, until they're 18 months old, they're then, well actually no, sorry, until they're a year old, they're weaned onto kelp. And then they stay on kelp diet for the rest of their life until they're ready to be um, eaten. <laughs> um, so I'll just show you while I'm standing here oh, in the farm. So these lids, um, abalone are light sensitive, so that's why we have to have these black lids on top to so that they don't get too exposed to the light. And then we have Oh, they've fallen to the bottom now. I don't know if you can see. I'll try another one. They're not, they haven't come up to eat. They've already eaten this morning. Whoops. But generally you can see This is the seaweed that they eat and you can see they're very messy. This, this is how they eat into the seaweed. No, oh, here we have one. I won't disturb it too much. There's a little copepod on it. So this is an example of an abalone. Um, you can see how it grows from a tiny little, that's how it starts off, and then it just grows in a whirl all the way around. So it's just continuously adding on a new hole. See those little air, those, those little holes? They're just continuously adding on and that's how they grow their shell. So because it's a land-based system and we're pumping seawater um, onto the land, it is energy intensive. So 
This is why we've introduced the wind turbine. It just helps us to power the farm and our location right on the, the west coast uh, of Ireland. It, it just means we get a lot of wind, so we may as well be using it. So here, this is a sea cucumber. So this is what we're going to be introducing into the bottom of the tanks um, with the abalone so that they can emit the calcium carbonate for good abalone shell development. And these guys will get very healthy eating the abalone uh, poo. The sea cucumbers are um, very nutritious. So all this yellow underneath is chondroitin, which is very good for joints. And the animal itself is full of collagen. So it's, it's a very, um, I suppose, beneficial food for your skin and it's I think it's part of the reason why it's very popular in amongst uh, older age groups in Asia especially in China because <laughs> it's it makes um, people's skin look younger apparently there is the view of the our container room where we host our tours I just finished one there So from inside the container room, you can kind of get a nice view of the sea. So that's the Atlantic there. And I started the tours mainly as a way to promote um, the abalone, that there's abalone in Ireland because it's not a native species to Ireland, but also um, as a way of giving people more of an awareness of how aquaculture can be done in a more sustainable way. Um, because I think a lot of in intensive uh, aquaculture farms that use a lot of dry food to get their animals to or their fish or shellfish to grow very big, very fast, um, has given all aquaculture a bad reputation. And it's just, I think, something that um, needs to change because we have overfished the seas. It's something that's been happening for the for the last decade and longer like really a decade ago we were aware of, of how much overfishing was ha fishing was happening happening and nothing was done about it um so now we've ended up in a situation where um there's just no more fish out there and we really need to look at sustainable ways of, of growing seafood and part of that might mean that you know we can't enjoy the seafood that was once widely available in the wild we might need to change to other fish and shellfish that are suited to gr being grown in a more confined space and that, that it's not torture for them to be grown in a confined space. I think the example of salmon, you know, it's like taming a lion, like salmon are supposed to swim across the Atlantic and back. Um, a, a fish that would be better suited would be something like turbot, which just, they're like sea cows, they just float around and they're not very active, they don't need to swim very far. Uh, so I think that kind of way of thinking needs to, um, yeah, come on stream faster because we don't, we just don't have a lot of time to um, continue to exploit the seas and not, not be growing seafood if that's what people want to eat. Um, I also think that seaweed cultivated in conjunction with different types of um, seafood aquaculture makes a lot of sense because seaweed is also a very nutritious uh, source of, of a lot of vitamins and minerals and omega-3s and it's a vegetarian um, product but also it's just it, it cleans the environment that the seafood are, are growing in as well so it's just again encouraging that kind of ecosystem to, uh, to develop like you would I mean I use the example I don't know if you can see that field there um, if you saw a cow in a field with just grass and nothing else, um, it would just look very strange. Like the, the seaweed and algae that grow in the tanks with our abalone are like the hedgerows on a field. So um, that would be like my, my main, um, I suppose, uh, point in, in this presentation is just to, to think of different ways of doing aquaculture that is sustainable and, and you know healthy for the animals that you're growing and for the humans that end up eating them because there's nothing worse than uh, 
continuing on this path of just artificially trying to enhance things to grow faster and bigger um because that just doesn't end well for for anyone um so yeah i think that's my time is up now but um if anyone has any questions uh feel free to send them to laura and if i can answer them i will i will get the answer back to you as soon as i can so thank you for for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference okay bye